Hi there, Michael here. Today's video is one that I wanted to make for a very long time and I have a feeling this video will generate two types of reactions. One group will say, wow, that's amazing. I didn't think this was possible. I need to try this immediately. And the other group might respond with, uh, go home, old man. Somebody like you shouldn't work with audio anymore. Now, to determine which group you belong to, you'll probably need to watch this video until the end to get the full picture. And somebody also told me that it helps if you subscribe to this channel. Just saying. If you've been following my videos for a while, you should know two things about me. First, I'm not a professional audio engineer, even though people think I am. I'm a very experienced technology educator in game design, which is a field adjacent to audio engineering. So everything I'll be discussing today should be viewed from that perspective. Second, I'm a bit of a headphone collector. I own about two dozen high-end headphones ranging in price points. My current favorites are the Sony MDR MV1 and the Newman NDH30. They are here under my desk, so these guys here. And you will quite often also see me using the Focal Elegia on my channel. They are my absolute favorites for casual listening or when I need closed back headphones, like for example, when I'm making these videos. But it might surprise you that for professional work, I almost always turn to these little devices here, the Apple AirPods Pro version 2. There are several reasons for this, which I will explain in detail. However, the most important reason and the main focus of this video is that the Apple AirPods Pro 2 now function as FDA approved over-the-counter hearing aids. And this means you can use them to compensate for any imperfections in your hearing. In this video, I'll show you how this works and more importantly, whether it can help you make better music. And here's a big spoiler alert. The answer is yes, absolutely. It does help you producing music and you don't even need to have any medically relevant hearing loss to benefit from it. What do I mean by that? Well, let's jump in and find out. Before discussing the Apple AirPods Pro as hearing aids and their role in music production, let me first briefly explain why I think you should always test your audio with AirPods anyway. There are two main reasons for this. First and foremost, Apple AirPods Pro are incredibly popular earbuds. Many people use them, particularly for their noise cancelling capabilities. And this means you'll want to ensure your production sound good on these devices. So even if you don't agree with my other arguments, you should at least have a pair for testing purposes. Second, Apple AirPods Pro have head tracking capabilities that you can use for immersive audio work, such as for Dolby Atmos productions, for example. Now, I've discussed this extensively before, and I'll be releasing another video about it next week. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. Now, whenever I mention head tracking as an alternative to working in a full Atmos Studio environment, I receive many, let's call them dissenting opinions on my channel. I understand this perspective. Working in a real Atmos Studio is obviously superior. However, sometimes this just isn't an option. And I found the argument that unless you're working in a high-end Atmos Studio, you can't do any professional work in Atmos whatsoever. Somewhat elitist, to be perfectly honest. Maybe your hobby is to lack the money or even the space to build an Atmos studio. Or perhaps you are traveling and need to prepare a production you'll later complete in your studio. There are many scenarios where a head tracking approach proves useful, even for the most seasoned Atmos engineer. And Apple AirPods currently offer the most convenient way to utilize this feature. But that's not the focus of today's video. Today I want to discuss the third reason. And this is the main reason why I've switched to using Apple AirPods almost exclusively for most of my audio related work. Work. Apple AirPods Pro now function as an FDA-approved over-the-counter hearing aid. Later in this video, I'm going to show you how this works and share my impressions of their effectiveness. But first, I need to discuss my personal experiences with hearing loss. Hearing loss is a topic audio engineers rarely discuss for very obvious reasons. Think about it. If you're a music producer looking for a mastering engineer, who would you choose? Someone with known hearing loss or someone with perfect hearing? The answer is clear, which explains why hearing loss remains completely underdiscussed in the audio engineering world. However, hearing loss affects all of us, especially those working with audio, and much of it is age-related. An audio engineer in their 60s and 70s simply cannot hear at the same level as a 20-year-old. That's just a fact, and while I wish people were more open about it, I completely understand why they are not. 
Regarding my personal hearing loss, you will see my hearing profile shortly, but let me first provide a general overview. My hearing loss has two primary components. First, there is age-related hearing loss. I'm in my late 50s and frequencies around 16 kHz are completely outside my hearing range, which is unfortunate, but irreversible and there's nothing I can do about that, unfortunately. The second component likely originated from chronic ear infections I had as a child, and that is a mild cookie bite hearing loss in the mid-range. In daily life, this doesn't affect me at all. In fact, had it not been for a severe ear infection two years ago, I might have never known about my mild hearing loss. I sometimes joke that my hearing is naturally V-shaped, which is essentially accurate. The only noticeable impact on my daily life is my dislike of bright headphones. Biodynamics, for example, peak exactly where my hearing is best, which amplifies the brightness for me, and that can be extremely fatiguing. This is why I prefer mid-forward headphones. On a side note, I suspect that when headphone reviewers discuss their preferred frequency response curves, they are really describing how these curves match their physiological hearing profiles. Before showing you how this hearing aid functionality looks in practice, there's one more important point I need to make. Hearing loss isn't constant. Your hearing ability can vary daily. When I take hearing tests, for example, some days show no medically relevant hearing loss at all, but usually it comes in classified as mild. Now, it is important to point out that in order to set up the hearing aid functionality of the Apple AirPods Pro, you need to have an iPhone. However, once you've set that up, the hearing aid functionality works across all Apple devices. So you can then take your Apple AirPods, and that is actually the main point I'm trying to make, and go over to your Macintosh and use it in connection with your digital audio workstation on your Mac. Now, with that being said, let me put on my AirPods and open the configuration options on my iPhone. In order to demonstrate what's going on on my iPhone, I'm going to use the new iPhone mirroring app. So while this looks like I'm working on a Mac, I'm actually working on my iPhone here through the iPhone mirroring app. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to set up the hearing aid functionality. And this is done through the settings. And in the settings under Apple's AirPods Pro, you can uh, go down here and here you have hearing assistance. And you need to set that to enabled in order to uh, enable the hearing aid functionality. Now, uh, uh, you can set different types of adjustments, and I'm not going to talk about those. So those are primarily used for uh, the actual traditional way of using the Apple AirPods as hearing aids. What I'm actually more interested in is the media assist functionality, and you need to have that enabled because that essentially makes sure that uh, whatever audio is going through the AirPods, if it is audio coming from a digital audio workstation, for example, is going to be affected by the hearing aid functionality of the Apple AirPods, and that means that any audio is going to be corrected in such a way that you hear them or that you hear the audio perfectly. You can then uh, select whether you want to also have that adjusted for calls and FaceTime. But the most important point that I want to make here is you need to have that enabled for music and video. Now here down, uh, you can enable or uh, you can update the hearing test results. And uh, the way you get this hearing test is uh, in two ways. You can either use a hearing test that you took at a professional audiologist, and you can actually add that here. Uh, it allows you to actually type that in manually, or you can also scan that and simply use the scan of your hearing test in order to get that type of result. Or the other option is that you can use your iPhone as a testing device and there are two ways to do that the first one is you can go through the apple hearing test so here you have this little button here that you can uh, push and if you click on that button it will actually guide you through a hearing test that hearing test works relatively well it is very similar to a hearing test that you would take at an audiologist uh, another thing that you can do is you can use a third-party application and i'm actually using the mimi hearing test application which i find to be particularly accurate uh, the, the results that I'm getting from that particular application are almost completely identical to the results that I got from my professional audiologist. And here you already see my hearing results. Uh, and as you can see, I have a bit of a cookie bite hearing loss. And uh, the cookie bite hearing loss is more pronounced in the right ear than it is in the left ear. My hearing in the lower frequencies and the higher frequencies is relatively okay. Now, uh, as I said at the beginning, this is going to vary from day to day. Sometimes these curves are a little higher but usually kind of this is the type of hearing test that I'm getting. Now, one important thing that I need to mention, and you see here the decibels, 
um, that these are not your traditional decibels. So please don't mistake them for the decibels that you have in your digital audio workstation. I've seen people frantically searching for EQs that can uh, increase certain frequencies by 25 decibels. Please don't do that. If you do that, you kind of completely destroy your hearing. Um, these are different types of decibels. The correction that you would need to take with an EQ are actually relatively minor, just a couple of dB really. And I have a certain feeling that some of my headphones actually function almost like hearing it's because their frequency response uh, curve um, essentially emphasizes the area that I'm not hearing that particularly well. So when I like a headphone, then usually it is a headphone that corrects my hearing in one way or the other. Now, regardless if you're using the Apple test or the test with a third-party hearing test app, in the end, what you want to do is you want to connect it to Apple Health and that will store your hearing test results in the Apple Health application and from there the uh, settings application will be able to take that hearing test and apply them to your airpods so that's pretty much it so once you have set that up the apple airpods are effectively hearing aids and any audio that is going through the apple airpods is going to be corrected in such a way that you have a neutral hearing experience let me conclude with my final impressions of how well this works and uh, its application in music production. The AirPods Pro obviously aren't ideal for audio work as they aren't neutral. If this concerns you, you can EQ them for a more natural frequency response, which works actually quite well together with the hearing aid functionality. However, in my experience, EQ isn't really necessary. The AirPods Pro are, which I would consider good enough for basic audio work. Obviously, you can't do serious mastering work with these. So if you are an intern in a studio mastering the latest tracks of Taylor Swift, don't tell your boss that Michael said to use the AirPods. That is not my point. What I mean is that they're perfectly fine for casual work or for projects that will undergo more rigorous mixing and mastering later. Given that caveat, however, I must clearly state that the benefits for correcting what I hear significantly outweigh the disadvantage of not having a perfect frequency response, at least for me. And then there's one final comment, and that is that hearing is not a constant for anybody. So if you're looking at your hearing profile, regardless of how good your hearing is, there will always be a little bit of an up and down, and there will always be a little bit of a coloration in the way you hear. So the hearing aid functionality of the Apple AirPods might actually also be beneficial for people who do not really have a hearing loss at all, but just wants to even out their hearing profile so that they can have the most natural sound possible. So this might actually be useful for anybody, not just for people who have mild hearing loss. But I'd love to hear your opinion. Do you use AirPods Pro for audio work? How well do this perform in your experience? Have you ever tried the hearing aid functionality? And if so, what are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments below. And with that being said, I'll see you all in the next video.